Abby here with Scrap and Abby and I have a project to share with all of you. This is going to be a custom insert for my Foxy Fix Traveler's Notebook and what I've done is on this piece of cold pressed uh, watercolor paper I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I just used some of my different basic watercolors. It's a kit I bought at Hobby Lobby. I don't know the name brand. It's really inexpensive and I just had a lot of creative play and I just love how this turned out. So how I got some of the splotches is I just dipped my paint, you know, um, my brush into the paint and then on top of another brush I just did this business which is something that everybody does. It's not anything new or anything and you just tap it like this and all the splotches come down. It's awesome. I love it. I've been doing that for a few years with my paper crafting projects as well. So and then on the edging here you're going to see some of the gold Distress stain uh, or paint that I use from Tim Holtz. I'll have a video or excuse me a picture either at the beginning or the end of this video Sharing with you the different products that I used but because I didn't film this I was just having a, um, some creative play one night while editing some videos and um, I forgot to turn the camera on So I'm going to be turning this into a cover for my traveler's notebook. So I wanted to show it to you before I um, Made it and bent it down. So this is going to be the width now. I didn't like pre-plan the size I just this is the pad of paper that I purchased for watercolor. I didn't want to get the huge sheets because I felt like that was too big for me. Um, my husband did, but I can use his and cut it down or whatever. And they have all different kinds of sizes. So I'm just going to be folding this in half and I'm going to make this paper fit this insert. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that um, or share with you first. So this is some old um, watercolor type of paper art paper that I picked up um, from a free crafty um, haul I had quite a while ago and it's just really cool. I hope we can kind of see the texture. I'm not sure if the camera's going to focus enough to show you the texture but you can see that around uh, my fingers there. This awesome texture. Oh I love it. So pretty. Oops. And um, so I have a few sheets of these so all I'm going to do is just trim these down to the appropriate size for this size of a cover and then my scrap pieces of course I will keep because I can watercolor on those, stamp on them, doodle on them, whatever, use them in other craft projects. So I'm just going to take some measurements, cut these down and then I'll be back to show you how I'm going to put this together. So I will see you in just a little bit. Okay ladies, I'm back and as you can see I've already cut down this old canvas paper that I had and um, some graph paper that I decided to throw in the mix. I just cut down a total of nine sheets because I have um, I wanted to put a set of three in between each canvas page so to speak and this is double sided so it's perfect. This is just something I picked up out of the school supply section. It was actually left over for my daughter's um, school supplies last year so I thought this was perfect and I just cut this down to fit the size of the particular watercolor paper pad that I have. So I've already went ahead and assembled the items I need to go ahead and put this book together. I decided to do a little, just a quick basic hand sewing instead of getting out my sewing machine. So I have um, my little pokey tool. I don't know what you want to technically call it. It's from We Are Memory Keepers, but it has a little pokey end right here. That, that's what I'm going to use to poke through the papers, layers of papers. Um, some binder clips to hold them together. And then I have some of this really yummy, dark, kind of plummy colored nylon twine and I'm going to use that to sew this together. Now the reason I'm using such a long needle is just because of the fact that it had like the bigger eye on it for me and then it's easier for me to manipulate with my fingers and this the regular tiny ones like when you're darning a sock or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get this started. So I already have these laid out in the format I would like them to be in. And I'm just gonna kind of stack them together. There might be a few pieces that are poking out over the edge like this right here. I don't care, it doesn't matter to me. It's just part of the whole eclectic handmade journal that you're doing. Now, you can choose if you have textured paper like what I have here to have, you know, alternating if you want to. But since I have papers that are going to be in between each layer, it doesn't matter to me at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fold this in half and I am going to get a little bit of crackling, but I like that. It's totally cool for me. You could cover a coat of this with some, um, you know, what's what I'm looking for? Some of your um, Mod Podge, like in matte or gel if you want to, but I personally like the feel of that. So I'm just going to pick which part I want to be the top, and I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just eyeball this and put it down, and I'm going to go ahead and just fold this in half. Now you could use your scoreboard of course if you wanted to. I just didn't feel like digging mine out. I'm being a little bit lazy I suppose. And I'm just going to use my bone folder just to give myself a nice crease. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for these sections here. And I'm going to, since this canvas paper is a little bit thicker, I am going to go ahead and just do each piece individually. So I'll come back on camera once I get this stuff done because it's not fun to watch me score paper, I'm sure. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I have all of the insert pages folded and put into the cover in the layering pattern that I wanted. Now, this might bug some people. You see how this is kind of hanging over on the edge? This does not bother me. And the reason why is because I like to line my edges with different colored pieces of washi tape, just kind of as, as I'm going. It just kind of depends on, you know, whatever whatever layout I do on each journal page. Sometimes I'll use masking tape, colored masking tape, whatever. But you could easily just put a ruler up here and you could take your um, X-Acto knife, your craft knife, or you could even take like a rotary, you know, fabric trimmer and trim this off if you didn't like that part. For me, it doesn't matter. And the reason that happened versus if I just used 12 by 12 cardstock or whatever is because this is some old vintage canvas and it's a little bit thicker. So it's kind of pushing the graph paper out this a little bit. But like I said, it doesn't bother me at all. So now what I'm going to do is just kind of, sorry if my camera's shaking, I'm just going to kind of tap these in and make sure that they are all down as far as they can possibly go. And just to kind of ensure that, I'm going to find my center here. I'm just going to take my ruler I have and just kind of put a little bit of pressure in there just to kind of make sure everything's tucked down as far into the spine as it's going to go. And then now, let's do that. And I'm going to take some of these clips. Now clearly you don't need as many as I'm putting on. I just like to because I want to make sure that these things do not move on me any more than necessary. So I'm just going to put one on each end. And then now we're going to go ahead and open the book up. And I'm just going to eyeball where I'm going to put these marks. There are a ton of different ways that you can bind your books. Some really fancy techniques. For me, I'm just going to do a basic three um, punch and then kind of just a basic, you know, lacing through, so to speak. Since this is going to be in my traveler's notebook, um, my Foxy Fix, and you're not going to see the spine. It's not like I'm making a journal that's going to be outside on its own. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just going to kind of open it up this way, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball where my center is. And I'm hoping this tool will be able to poke through all of those layers of canvas because it is a little bit older. So I'm going to pick it up just to make sure. And it did. You can see the tip poking out right there, so that's perfect. And then I'm just going to kind of make it look like that. And then now I'm just going to go and do one. Make sure I'm on camera or in frame. I'm just going to go ahead and do one down here. I don't want to do it too super close to the edge because I want to make sure that, um, you know, it doesn't tear or anything like that. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it again. Looks like I'm about an inch or so from the edge. And we'll just poke that in. And then now we're just going to do the basic sewing. So I'm going to leave the, um, eh, where'd my needle go? Oh no, I think my needle came out of my string. Oh, there it is. I didn't see it. It blended into my craft mat. <laughs> oh boy. I really need to be wearing my glasses. So I just have this much of a tail. You can leave as much as you want or short as you want. I'm not going to tie a knot in the end because I'm going to be just careful and not pull this all the way through. This is way more than I probably need for this, but I like to have enough just to make sure in whatever scrap I have, of course, I can just throw into my um, ribbon and trim stash. So to start with, I'm going to go ahead and poke up through the back. And I'm going to have to hold this up to my face so I can see you guys. I don't have my glasses on. So, all right, so there's that. And we're just going to go ahead and pull this through. And I wanted a little bit longer tail because this is a little bit thicker um, of this um, nylon string that I have, which I picked up for really cheap at Tuesday morning. We're going to go up to the center here. And I'll just pull this through and make sure I got my tail through here. All right, it's gonna pull up just a little bit and I'll leave just a little bit of a length on the back just so I don't pull all the way through on accident. I'm gonna leave about that much of a tail if you're curious of how, as to how much I'm gonna leave. So now we're gonna take my needle that keeps wanting to blend in with my craft mat <laughs> and I'm just gonna go ahead and go through this hole now and I'm gonna stand it up so it's a little bit easier for me to kind of push it in there. Going through this older canvas that I picked up, I think I got it at like an estate sale or something like that back in Oregon. It can be a little bit tricky to push through, but it is going through. I really wanted to incorporate that um, thicker canvas into this because I like old vintagey things like that, and I just really love the texture. So if you were using just you know regular cardstock or 
you know, vellum and, um, you know, different kinds of graph paper, things like that, it wouldn't be near as tough to get it through. But I got it through pretty good. And you can also use a thimble if you're worried about hurting, the, you know, your thumb or anything when you're pulling it through. So now I've got it through there. So I came up to the center and I'm gone down here and now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to go through the third hole on the bottom here and I'm going to poke back in just like I did before. Let me just get this lined up again. So this is just a really easy technique way to bind your book. Of course, there are tons of different videos on YouTube. You can search for all different kinds of really cool book binding techniques that, um, you know, I think are really awesome. And now we're going to go through the middle again, just like we did to begin with. And the reason we're doing that is so the inside... Sorry, I keep taking out a frame. I apologize, you guys. So um, this way, what it's going to do is it's going to give us that purple, you know, kind of an even stitching right there. And now I'm going to do is just go over here and I'm just going to make a basic knot. So I'm just going to clip this to where the length I think I want, because I don't mind a little bit of a tail, because I might want to maybe put some, um, once I take this out of my notebook, once it's full, I may want to... Um, like a little bead charm or something like that. So I'm just going to do just a couple knots here. You can do box knots if you want. You know, you can get as fancy as you want to with this. It's, you know, and I'm going to, you don't have to do this, but I want to. I like the look. I'm just picking up that spine and I'm going to do um, the spine string and I'm going to do just a couple more quick knots here just to make sure it's really going to stay in there for me. And then you can leave the tail, like I said, I'm going to cut it down just a little bit longer, or a little bit shorter, excuse me, and take off my binder clips. And there you have it. You have your own custom insert for your traveler's notebook. And I'll go ahead and get mine out so I can show you how it will look. This is the seersucker case that I pack mine around in. And especially when I'm going to appointments and things like that, I'm just pulling out a couple of my um, pencil pouches that I use when I have different art supplies in there. So this is my Foxy Fix Traveler's Notebook. I love it. This is Lilac. I think her name's going to be Lilac Beauty. Or one of my viewers suggested Lily, and I forgot who suggested that, but once I officially name it, I will be sure to um, credit her name, because she's when it came up with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in. I think what I'll do is go ahead and take out this insert here, because I'm still working on, some, on that one for some different art. And my little Planner Society girl... She wants to get caught up on my um, band here, but you gotta come out, I'm sorry. I know it's delightful to be inside the notebook, but okay, let me get this out. Ah! Oh, there I see it, okay, this way. And you guys didn't realize you were gonna get a little bit of a game show, Abby, trying to solve a puzzle here. <laughs> So I'm just going to go ahead and pull up this band, and then I'm going to find my center, which is easy to find because I used a dark um, piece of twine, and just put it in there, and it fits in just really nicely. I love it. Um, you, of course, can make this wider. The reason I went with this size again is because this is the size of watercolor pad that I have at this point in time. So there it is, and I love it. I have some different textures. I can, you know, um, do some really fun mixed media journaling on here. I can always, you can always put like, you know, um, sprays and things like this on the, on the different graph papers and if it bleeds through, I don't mind that. I think that's awesome. If you don't like that, you can always double the pages up or just do it strictly on your canvas. So I love how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial on how I made my custom watercolor vintage canvas and graph paper insert for my Foxy Fix Traveler's Notebook. So if you have any questions or would like to see uh, more videos like this, please comment below and let me know. I can also make custom inserts like this for you ladies. Just send me an email to scrapandabby at gmail.com. I am working on um, my website. I and uh, My husband built one for me, and so I'm just kind of updating that content because I do like to, um, I do have a client base both in Oregon and here in Florida and Washington State. So um, I might like to take custom orders from people if they would like to have some of my crafting and art pieces in their home. So I'll see you ladies next time. Happy crafting, happy planning, and happy scrapping. Bye!